This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2014 Ford Fusion SE. Up front is a 2.5 liter inline four and down below is a six speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here Ford Fusion for a couple of reasons, but mainly the fact that this is Ford's last sedan. And we'll talk a lot about that towards the end of the video. But if you guys would like to help support the channel, I have my website, ZachPradle.com. You can submit your vehicle to be reviewed. You could buy merchandise and you can read my blog, which is all behind the scenes content, what I'm filming that week, what you can expect on the channel and things like that. You can also submit your vehicle to me through PradleReviews at gmail.com if you'd like to email me about a car to film. But let's get back to that 2.5 liter inline four. Well, it is a Duratec 2.5 liter, which is an engine family from Ford that was actually designed by Mazda. Mazda and Ford have had a very long relationship from 1973 up until 2015. And the Duratec is one of those engines that crossed over. It makes 175 horsepower, which isn't anything crazy, but this engine has some serious capabilities. I actually drove a Mazda 3 that had this engine swapped into it, a little turbo strapped to it, and it made 515 horsepower. So it's within its realm. I like the Duratec engines, obviously being a big Mazda fanboy. I enjoy them. I'm very familiar with them. And it's interesting to see all the applications in which they went through in Ford and in Mazda. Like I said, paired to its six speed automatic transmission, nothing really too crazy. As I'm driving here, I'm not feeling anything weird. No beeps, squeaks, bumps, or rattles. And I can appreciate that from a almost 10 year old transmission. Last but not least, of course, the Fusion is front wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have those very typical blue Ford needles on the gauges. On the left, I have my tachometer and coolant temperature. On the right, I have my spit and fuel and then in the center I get the very 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 typical Ford information screen I'm cycling through a bunch of different things that you can look at on here very interesting stuff I do like this screen it has a decent amount of colors I've just seen it in so many different vehicles that it's just burned into my psyche at this point on the steering wheel on the left I have my controls for that center screen and the gauges as well as my cruise control and on the right side of the steering wheel I have my controls for the center screen talk about that a little bit later on as well as skip track volume and voice commands off to the left of me I do have my headlight switches gauge dimmer switches and things like that and on the door I have my lock and unlock power mirrors and power windows moving into the center I have two climate control vents and the hazard switch then I have a tiny little baby infotainment screen it is not touch screen you use this little selector dial and this is very very basic this is what you find in police cars fleet vehicles have this tiny little screen so nothing really too interesting here and it does not have a backup camera down below that we have the infotainment screen controls volume power tune and a cd player and then i have my climate controls the climate controls are arranged in a slightly interesting way this sort of center button outside dial type look at least a little bit interesting and different i do a fan speed and of course temperature and where to send it and we have our little ford man but unfortunately he has been severed in half can't be a good day for him down below i have a big storage area and a 12 volt outlet which is nice and then we have the shifter the shifter looks and feels very good i can plus minus on the side if i'd like it says sync powered by microsoft up at the top because this does have the sync system and the shifter works like it should it's an automatic shifter don't really know what else to tell you i do have a power parking brake again 2014 is kind of early to have a power parking brake but I have it. And then we have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Ford Fusion SE from 2014. And it starts to go in, but then it bottoms out and it doesn't really stay in place, unfortunately. I really wanted this thing to pass, but I have to give it a fail for the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> 
Then I do get a little center console with a 12 volt outlet, USB and aux in, which is very nice. And then we have to talk about the seats. This seat is power. That's part of the SE trim level. So the SE trim level is actually one step up from base and it adds six speakers. It has the 17 inch alloy wheels and the power driver seat. You could also get an SE luxury package, but this is not it. The seats are nice and comfortable. I wish that they were heated on a day like today. It's 31 degrees, but beggars can't be choosers. Speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2014 Ford Fusion SE and knee room great. Headroom, it's a little short, but it's a sedan. That's what you get. So if I kneel my head a little bit, it's totally fine. Do have a 12 volt outlet down below. And I do get a center console here, two cup holders, smaller than the ones up front. So no big freaking bottle back here either. And that's really it. Very, very basic back seats. Again, the SE is one step up from the base model. So there's like the S technically, and then the SE, which just adds two more speakers, wheels, and a power driver seat. That's it. So basically this is a base model with three added things. Keep that in mind. Let's go take a quick look at the trunk and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the Ford Fusion SE. Hit it twice and it actually pops the trunk a little bit for you. Once we are in here, of course, floor mats, but decent amount of space, actually a fair amount of space. Really, really like that. Can also pop this up. I do get a spare tire, which is very, very nice. But that's about it. Nothing really too crazy back here, but it is a larger sedan. So it does have that really nice trunk space. Now we gotta talk about the looks. And I think honestly, the Ford Fusion is pretty handsome of a car. They did facelift it in 2019, make it look a little bit different, but I still think that this car looks fairly modern for the year that it's made. 2014 somehow was eight years ago. I can't believe it. This is an eight year old car and I think it still looks pretty fresh and modern. But now let's get to my final thoughts here on the Ford Fusion SE. Well, driving it, being in it, spending time with it. I can't say anything has really blown me away. It's a Ford sedan from the early 2010s. It's fine. It does the job. It's not the most interesting car in the world, but that's okay. Not every car has to have a library full of weird quirks and features like some people might think. But the reason I was really excited to drive this here particular Ford Fusion is the fact that this is Ford's last sedan. On July 31st, 2020, Ford built their last ever sedan. It wasn't a Ford Taurus SHO. It wasn't a Fiesta. It was a Fusion, just like this one. This is the final keystroke, at least for the time being, of four-door sedan Fords. And if you're watching this from overseas, the Ford Mondeo. The Ford Mondeo is the Ford Fusion, and that also came to an end. The world is favoring crossovers right now, SUVs. But why is that? Is it millennials hating the fact that their parents had minivans and they wanna do something different? We've seen that all throughout time. The generation before them hated their parents' station wagons, so they bought a minivan. And then the next generation hated the minivan, so now they're buying crossovers. Because no one, apparently, wants to be like their parents. Or is it the fact that manufacturers who build the cars have to abide by less strict fuel economy rules when it's a crossover. Is it because people like the ride height difference? Is it because the electrification of cars seems to be easier in a crossover because of the weight? Or is it just the way the market's going? I could go on and on and on trying to figure out why crossovers are so favored at the moment. And maybe one day I'll get my answer. I'll figure it out. But the truth of the matter is, no matter what the reason, the sedan is dying. And in Ford's case, it is dead. And this is their legacy. This is what they leave behind. This is the period in the final sentence of four-door sedan Fords. I mean, just to think, all of these fantastic, fantastic cars have led to this, and that story stops. The last wave has crested the beach, and now the tide will bring it back out. I hope one day Ford makes sedans again. I hope that they come back into style. I hope that they become financially viable again. But for right now, this is it. This is the last Ford sedan.
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their Ford Fusion. Toyota of Naperville is absolutely awesome. They have tons of used vehicles on the lot. This is one of their used cars. If you are looking for a new vehicle in the Chicagoland area, Toyota of Naperville should be your first stop. All their information is up on the screen or found in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.